touch me, touch me, touch me. I like the way she fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Hit it, hit it, hit it, drop. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Hit it. Hit it. What's good with the YouTube? This your boy CJ. And this your girl Rena. Make, Make sure y'all subscribe CJ and Rena. Alright, today we got a reaction video on Abbott and Costello. Who's on first? Guys, and it's not only a reaction video, it's a comment reaction video. So this is something y'all need to know that we're going to start doing. Showing the people that got the top comments reaction and seeing exactly what they say. Sometimes we can read it, sometimes we can't. Sometimes we got to know exactly what y'all talking about. And yeah, this is about to be the way of actually just screenshotting it and showing y'all our reaction of what y'all have said. Are you ready? I'm ready. Y'all ready? Let's get it. All right. Ray Mose, I was watching a Dodger game on TV a couple years ago. The Dodgers had a Japanese player whose last name was Who. He got a single while standing on first base. Ben Scully said, folks, I can finally say who's on first. Well, okay, uh, not really knowing if that was some kind of, like, response to, um, uh, to, like, trying to figure out why, um, why they did it. Maybe they were just saying, like, in baseball, they finally got to say what was going on in the video, who's on first. Ah, uh, okay, so I guess this, this is, like, a helpful thing. Also, y'all look, guys, they had like 17 more responses at the top. We kind of was just uh, strolling towards down to actually uh, get as many as we can uh, because it had a uh, pretty, pretty bunch. Uh, next comment says from Pony Boy, La Fa La, I remember that game. <laughs> Richard Wallogs. At Pony Boy, he's Korean, Ching Long Hu. In 2011, he was on the Mets, and their announcer got to say it. That was the first I had heard of him. So it was the first time for me. Funny stuff. Hmm. Well, I mean, hey, it, it was funny. You got a good taste of knowing funny stuff. Uh, Cyber Woods 2002 says, I bet the, the crowd got a roar of reactions out of that basically all these people are replying to the first comment that we just read so pretty much these are responses to the first comment you heard okay next person is paul um doorwing Dor at point at pony boy me too lol and then ma says that's awesome laugh out loud laugh out loud laugh out loud so pretty much she was laughing, or he was laughing, somebody. Well, somebody was laughing. So that's pretty much all the responses to the first comment of what, what they were saying. Yeah. AJ17, I remember that, and I remember just losing it laughing. Tracy Diamond said, laughing my uh, ass uh, out. Sabrina Royals says, ha 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 ha. That's that last name, right? Rios. Rios. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Charles Anderson, I saw that and almost <laughs> fell out of my chair laughing. My dad was a kid when people like Abbott and Costello were on the radio and eventually TV. Every time these shows were rebroadcast, they were on in my house. I love it. Try some Johnny Dollar or Sam Spade mystery shows or the Bickersons for some husband and wife comedy. Wow, that's some nice shows that you are picking for us to do. Uh, trust me, they're soon to come. Sometimes that... We see uh, comments and we try to do each one of y'all comments that y'all say. It's hard to do because they will block them. As soon as they go on, some people will have the chance to see it. And then the person that actually gave that comment probably missed it. Yeah. But just know, guys, this comment that we read, we are most likely have did it or try to do it and they didn't do it or we haven't got to it just yet. But it's coming. Okay, uh, Snow Hour 15. Ray Mall's Eunice Who's Vin Scope? Who's Vin Scope? Is that is that a question? That's a question. They ask him like who is that? And it's the baseball player. Gotcha. Okay, so Vin Scope, you're pretty much a baseball player that uh she knows more about than me. Sorry. I just read the comment. I don't know anybody. No. Oh. 
If you read the comment, you'll understand he asked the person because he's the one who made the comment. Okay, okay. I, I guess this is still in that chain of comments because it looks pretty long. But anyways, um, Ross. Clack it. Richard Willocks, Chen Long, who is Taiwanese. Mark G, I remember that. Yeah. Jabber CT, Vince, Vince Scully, who's on first, and then they sent a link. The link. So I guess that's a link of actually showing us, uh, or showing that whole group of people, the person of Vince Hingle. Scully. So basically they showing, I guess, the game? I'm not sure. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's possible that anybody can just take that link and actually uh, type it in your computer and figure it out. Or we can actually figure it out. We just can't tell y'all at the moment. Uh, okay, uh, Kelsa Raven Locke. I wonder if the players was confirmed by everyone laughing. What does that mean? Was they confused? I guess. Oh, so. I say confirmed. I'm sorry. Confused. Sorry. Right. Sometimes reading stuff, eyes are not functional. So yeah, uh, I guess they may was confused. They probably was confused because the person name was who. So, if you say that during a game, they'll be like, how you don't know the player's name? Possibility. I mean, y'all should know. Because after these comments that y'all give at the bottom, uh, pretty much we are going to have the same response towards y'all. So, we can actually have a better understanding of everything that we're trying to figure out with these top comment people that y'all really like saying. So, Elder Millennial. Millennial. Russ Claggett, which is another way of saying free Chinese. <laughs> I guess he asked in that person, uh, what's another way of saying something? They um, pretty much says, I guess. Rich in 212, I remember that it was reported on many major news outlets. Bernard Chalafletti Jr., excellent. I guess that's a way of saying uh, a lot of things that they pretty much correspond to putting together as a bond of what they've been saying. Boy, Mary, man, what is so cool is that there is no sexual jokes, no racial jokes, no political jokes, no cussing, foul language, or anything, just pure comics as it used to be. That is true. They don't have like anything that's bad. negative or just bad. That's why y'all actually see that Abbott and Carcello is a lot on our videos of showing. Uh, so if y'all actually go through our videos, y'all will see Abin and Carcel a lot on there. Cause I mean, hey, who would love to watch them? In, right. It's in a different way of- They're clean comedians. TV shows, exactly. Cave Landerson 42, just goes to show that you don't need to cuss or insult people to be funny. Today's comedians need to study these guys along with the other old vaudeville Vaudeville, Vaudeville acts in earlier 20th century comedy. Problem is, for the last 30, 40 or so years, kids don't like anything older than 5, 10 years old or things that the older generations, it isn't cool or hip to like things from your parents' generation or earlier. Well, to be honest, I guess that's some people, but I find it funny because I love to watch I Love Lucy and that's kind of older. <coughs> so yeah. I mean, it's not bad to like older things. I guess just it's more it's more of a way of actually uh, liking something that you wouldn't have a chance to actually watch because you're in a newer generation. So why not watch something that you wouldn't have never watch when it came out? All right, because things I watch is gone now. Yeah, and it's to have older stuff that actually shows up on TV. It just wouldn't have anything like Abbott and Costello to come on there, right. which they should somewhere on TV. It should have somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Connie add anything that was to be shown on film to the public had to pass censorship standards. Even saying damn was really rarely allowed. Hmm. Which is why he said darn it at the other venues. Comics did use swear words and make naughty jokes. My parents went to Las Vegas to see one of their favorite comics. He was a regular on the Dick Van Dyke show. They ended up being applauded because his live act was filled with cussing and swearing. I don't know if Abbott and Costello got down and dirty live, 
but many did. Actually, today, because of cell phones, comics don't have the freedom to say whatever they want in their live acts that previous generations had. Wow. So. That was a way of actually uh, putting it into a different way of actually selling people how the uh, new generation is versus the old generation. Right, because they really didn't cuss back in the day. Yeah, good. I don't yeah. think I ever heard them cuss. Yeah. If they said a curse word, it was actually a curse word into a different words of saying that's not a curse word now. So, it'd be like, oh, sausage gut. Or, you know, just something that you... Something that you wouldn't expect. Exactly. KW1213 at Calanderson42. I get your point, but there are plenty of comedians that are funny without being vulgar. There's something for everyone out there. This old stuff is funny, but about three seconds. But I respect it. Contextual. Big Mo the Dawn. Um, it's a different generation from those years to the previous. Today, people have shorter attention spans. That is true. Because you can watch them and then not even pay attention to it at all. I gotta go watch something. If it's boring, I I can't tell you nothing that just happened. Saying short attention span is actually really a good thing of saying because uh, when you actually think about it, if your phone ring, your eyes is off that whatever you was watching just instantly. True. Yeah. Uh, Clint Tapper. Clemson forty two duos like Armstrong and Miller Mitchell and Webb. more combi and wise the two ronnies etc are following in the footsteps and doing different types of comedy that is just uh as clever without cursing etc but that's the thing i wish more comedians would realize that cleverness outranks cussing so basically well they did do everything like perfect because when they kept talking to each other it's like Back to back, back to back, back to back. It's like, like they, they practiced. Just knew what they were saying. Like, it's like they practiced on it so good that it it's like it was like it was stuck in their brain. Like it was just instantly really good to actually stay on stage. Chad Smith. Amusingly, back in their day, blue humor was illegal. Look up Hayes Code. Any dirty joke were out of the question, so comedians had to be creative. <laughs> wow, that that's a, that's really true. Also, um. DM says no meanness either. Right, everything was like clean. Basically, they wasn't being mean to each other. They wasn't being rude. Actually, it, it was it was like Abner Corsella was not considered on me. It was more of a joking mean. Cause I don't think anything ever was mean. If you ever watch, if you ever watch Stanky, he'll hit him. Oh, it's considered as a joking mean because they would look at it as not even taking it serious. It's more of a like taking it as a funny pain. All right. And then it hit him back as another funny pain. And it's really good. Isaac Alsa, Boy Merriman. To true, I wish there was a comedian like this on TV today. Horror icon at Connie Ad. Those standards didn't exist yet. That's a product of the 70s and 80s. Hmm. John Evans, Bud Abin is the best straight man in comedy history. How in the hell he doesn't crack in this bit is beyond me, huh? Basically, they're saying like how he didn't just bust out laughing. Oh, okay. So, I guess he was saying this bit is beyond me as... Saying that it it was something that he couldn't do. Young baller underscore eleven boy married man. What you trying to say? All black people be cussing and doing all the stuff you said. You the one racist. Hmm. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Julian Vega. Some comedy acts are like that now. So true. Art of more. They also didn't have to use blood and gore either. Vestiga, vestigo head, boy, Mary, men. You speak as if this sort of comedy does does not still exist. Very ignorant modern comics 
are just as good as the classics. The only thing, the modern comics not have the classics have is time gone by. Also, what is wrong with sexual jokes? Some of my favorite racial jokes, political jokes, and foul language. Okay, well, that's a big way of actually putting it. Um, I guess everybody likes different things. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. If you like different things, you're going to speak in a different mind of like in other stuff. Michael R.S., those two are the only two non-baseball related people who have been inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame because of their routine. Miss Apassionata, Michael R.S., really? I don't know that. Ha, ha, ha. Bernard Chalafi Jr., yes, that is true. Hmm. Who is this? Quint. Quint. John Forgenti, too? Sir Les, Michael R.S., I bow to your profile pic. Oh, I didn't even pay attention to the profile pic. Patrick, who's on first was picked as the greatest comedy routine of the 20th century. I think it will be the greatest of all time. Micah Vellani. Michael, is this your name? Michael Vellani? Hopefully we're saying it right. That's how you said it. Micah. Micah Vellani? Mm-hmm. I speak three languages. Fluently. And nothing I have heard in any of those languages has such perfect timing or rhythm. Symphonies are not as well constructed. Nice, nice, nice. JC9190. Absolutely agree. A comic. Masterpiece. Comic. Comedic. A comedic masterpiece. The bra bun one. I always thought it was Niagara Falls. Rob, Robin. Addis Addis Bond. Bond. Yeah, I agree. I haven't seen anyone beat it. Lewis and Martin were very good. As been bending. Cosby and. Cosby. I guess they meant Bill Cosby. Okay. I get. Okay. I guess y'all met Bill Cosby and Bob Hope, but those two are the best. Hmm. I guess that I mean Bill Cosby and Bob Hope. Bill Cosby, yes. Bob Hope, who is Bob Hope? I have no idea. Sorry, guys, if y'all know who Bob Hope is. Some of these actors, I I don't know who they are. But it's good that if y'all actually give us a uh, video at the bottom of him. Bob Hope would definitely check him out and y'all actually see him on here if we could because sometimes she get blocked again. Miss Apassionata, the Bar Bon one. That one is my personal favorite of there. It still cracks me up. Michael Smith, look up Andy Griffith describing football, also a classic. 65 Toss Power Trap L. I've been, I've heard this routine so many times. And still crack up a true grand gym. gym. Eyes is doing <laughs> Rich didn't. Even today, many comedians consider this duo to have the best time of any comedians ever. Daniel wrote, nice to see the younger generation get a bit of old time culture. David D. The proof of this. The proof of that is every people in countries that don't have baseball will laugh at this it's impressive not to impossible impossible not to clint tapper rich did on this routine had been adapted and used by so many comedic doubles over the years hmm. it's going down in folklore hmm. basically i mean nobody can really copy that at all. No, not really. Alright, where we at? <coughs> Thank you. Dave D at Clint Tapper SCTV did a version where Abbott is a concert promoter and Costello asked him who's on the bill. The who? Yes, you get the idea. So basically they did a version of that where they were promoters. Raw Aguilera 
at Dave D Animatics did a version with Slappy Squirrel where a rock festival sprung up around her den. The Who is playing. I think I watched that. We, I think we did a video on that one. Yeah, we did a reaction to that. Yeah. Route 66. Imagine how much they had to practice this routine to get this down. Wow. Yeah, actually right. That's what we had said earlier. So, yeah. Jason, and this isn't a particularly short performance of the routine. I have a dusty old cassette of them just killing it with this. This one is a bit wordy and loose compared to some of the recordings I've heard. I had an uncle who was a huge Abbott and Costello fan, and whenever he watched us, we listened to his comedy tapes. Hmm. Well, guess what? He may was a fan, but I, we, we still are. We are new fans, so <laughs> I, I know exactly why he was a fan. All right. Yeti Tracker 66, the timing and rehearsal put into gags like this was so difficult in the days of live television. These two are legendary. Mm. Mike Rogers. True, but by the time they hit TV, this bit and all the others must have become second nature to them. True comedy legends. James Ricker. This comedy bit was written for... Vaudeville. I, I hope we're saying that right. Vaudeville, where it was performed before a live audience with no cameras. Wow. Jeffrey Smith. What I found amazing is a whole new generation is finding this humor, and they are still finding it funny. Yes, it is. True. Most definitely. Don't worry. Be happy. No doubt, I'm happy. I'm laughing at them <laughs> laughing. <laughs> what? Okay, that was a that was a good one. He said, "No doubt, I'm laughing at them laughing." That was, I, that, that was nice. The Brabun one, without a doubt, one of the greatest time routines ever written. Wow. Yes, he wrote about that one. Manny Bruce Sal Salvador. This is the goat of all comedy routines i believe this is enshrined in baseball hall of fame i'm pretty sure that is a hall of fame type of thing because i mean hey who don't know about Abbott and Costello? right alex ball it is the only other comedian with a skit in the hall of red skeleton best routine ever Abbott and costello are the finest duo in comedy history no lie they are they are that was a good comment also manny bruce salvador at alex ball personally i like the stooges more but this routine is to me the best you're right about that manny bruce salvador yeah the stooges are my favorite also but this is hands down the best just wasted three hours here it really is one of my most clever routines of all time i gotta hand it to them for crafting it so perfectly and all done from memory so glad so funny glad you liked it Really Esme is. Nouvelle, for the rest of your lives, whenever you hear or say, I don't know, you'll hear third base. Dom Clark saw it in Copper Town, Copperstown when I visit the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Kelsa Ravenlock, what the hell do goats have to do with this video? <laughs> oh, wow, she don't know what it means. Manny Bruce Salvador at Kelsa Ravenlock, I will humor you. Greatest of all time, hence the GOAT. <coughs> Kelsa Ravenlock, Manny Bruce Salvador, how can anyone ever use the phrase the greatest of all time enough to even, to need to shorten it? If you have used the phrase that often, then it's <coughs> meaningless and just a speech effect. So yeah. why would you need to humor me by explaining it? If I said BRB, AFK, ASAP, TTYL, etc., then maybe, but GOAT is unnecessary and not standard in usage or form. Wow. Manny. Manny comes back with a response. So this is more like a conversation back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Manny says, I'm not the first to use the phrase. I didn't invent it, but it seems to me that you haven't heard it un until now. Sorry if that's the case with you. Wow, that's odd. That's a phrase. <laughs> Would get under someone's skin like that. Very 
interesting. And she comes back with a reply. Not the phrase itself and not... And not your response in particular. Sorry if I seem harsh. The thing that bugs me, I suppose, is the general trend of overstatement mixed with a random shortening of abbreviation of words and phrases with no universal context. Most of the time, the person using it is a cliquish, obnoxious, lazy type. I suppose I'm also guilty of making assumptions about the poster based on that. So I apologize for the tone of my response as your response shows me wrong and lacking patience this time. Hmm. Wow, this is a good back and forth. He comes back with another reply. Well, it's a phrase that is used in sports to describe the best athlete. For example, <coughs> Muhammad Ali in boxing or Babe Ruth in baseball. I used it because this skit is a sports routine and it is considered the best. It's so good that it is the spot in Coopersville. In Coppersville. But I think you're probably right that someone was too lazy or didn't have enough room and abbreviated the first time it was used, a little hints to go, I would say that has caught uh, Leah, uh, Leah Silver. Silver says, yep. Yeah. She's agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Christina West. Love watching young people watch old stuff. I grew up on it, but can't explain it to this generation. Don't know how I got here, but kudos to you. Best reaction I've seen yet. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. <laughs> Eddie Thompson said, you're a beautiful woman. To Christina West. Okay. Bill Olson. Good to see the younger generations discovering and appreciating this. Thank you. Also, I mean, we have to uh, find something actually better than actually the new generation of stuff that's on TV. True. Or on the internet. That's not as good. Yeah, a lot of things nowadays aren't as good. Not at all. Ken Connor, this routine is played on a loop at the Coopersville NY Hall of Fame. Mm. Sam Siga Norelli, as it should be an absolute classic that will always be funny. I believe the version used here is considered the definite, definitive one. Force Maximus 84, I shoot the Jumbo Shrimp games in Jacksonville and they play this whenever there's a rain delay. Wow, okay. Well, at least y'all know y'all into one uh, group of conversation. True. Hi-Fi John. Who is the former president of China? Who? That's what I'm asking. Who? Who <laughs> is the former president of China? That's what I'm asking you for. He tried to make another one with um, China. Like a president version. <clears throat> well, yeah, because Chinese people have like names like who yeah. and stuff like that. Twilight Man. Johnny Carson did the back when Reagan was president. Ah, okay. So therefore, they got the uh, link of that one actually showing right there. Who is on the phone? Who is on the phone? Yes, sir. Who is on the phone? <laughs> oh, wow. I think, did we do, I think we may have did a reaction to this. Yeah, may, may have. Just check it out. Pretty much we have a lot of them. Kit's World. Hi Fi John, this is amazing. Deaky one. And not one curse word in the whole skit. So true. Bert 7837. Okay, question mark. Alex Hollop. Not even a sexual innato. Hmm. This is really true. Yeah, they don't have no sexual content or anything like that. Sir Vento. Sir Vince of Lord. I was born in 67, so I really appreciate this video and the fact that younger people are enjoying these legends of comedy. I was also born in the same city as Lou Costello. Rest in peace. Wow, rest in peace. At least y'all probably had a chance to meet him. That would be a great thing of acknowledging and meeting him if they still was living. All right. Goat Boy 420. Yes, see that when comments have to re rely wow. rely on actual freaking talent possibly the greatest comedy sketch of all time beautiful man 
Old Geezer <laughs> Gaming. Abbott and Costello was inducted in the Baseball Hall of Fame for the Who's on First Act. They are the only people in the Hall of Fame that had no association with baseball. They never played, coached, managed, nor owned a team. <coughs> hmm. John Wagner. The routine is played in the Hall of Fame, but Abbott and Costello are not officially members of the Hall of Fame. Penny Sather. That's right. Sylvie. Sylvie. Good clean comedy. I love it and enjoy it. Yo. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all's reaction. Yeah. Hey. Now do. Oh. Marvin. And there's a lot of likes on that. I, I'm glad that y'all like that. M1 Shall. Now do Tim Conway's Elephant Story. We did that. And they laughed during the whole thing when they was trying to tell the uh, joke. So it was kind of like. They couldn't keep it together. <coughs> no, it was a little different. John Doe or the fireman skit on the Carl Burnett show, RSRT. I think they died of laughter if they did it. Dan W. OMG. Yes, Nork. M1 Child. I always heard snorky. I don't <laughs> know what that means. Get somebody to snort. Oh. <laughs> uh, T. Uh, that's what I think mostly. Yeah, I, if, if it's not what you're talking about, pretty much just let us know. So, yeah, it ain't snarking. The Red Sombrero. And we shall. Tim Conway as the dentist sketch. We also watched that one. You guys got to check it out. JC9190 at the Red Sombrero. That's the one I thought of too. Jake Frost at M1 Shall. LOL. It was F Nort. Quincy Camo. I start laughing just thinking of that one. Snork. Snork. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't even think that means snorting. Because they correct them and said for North. I don't know what they mean. I don't know. Y'all need to uh, give us a better understanding of, of what snort. y'all mean. Wiley Cousins. This routine makes me so dizzy that I fall out of my chair. They did a similar wordplay routine about loafing in the bakery. You have to look it up. It's just hilarious. These guys are genius. They, uh, the, the, what is it called? The loafing one? The one they did about the bread. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like the one, one um, showing that it has a lot of different meanings to it. Yeah. All right. Angie uh, Lou. There's two. These two can make you laugh till you hurt and without any bad language. Thanks for the amazing reaction. You're welcome. You're welcome so much. Jack Dickinson, wonderful skit. Did you know that originally this was done on radio because TV had not been invented? These two guys became super famous from radio. Nobody knew what they even looked like, which made it even more amazing. <coughs> Great video. Keep it up. Thank you. Wow, thank you, thank you. Michael Scott, before radio, they honed this another and other routines to perfection on the Vanderbilt circuit. Then came radio, then films and TV. If you like this video, try a couple of their movies like Book, Privates and Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Hmm. Christine Matlin. This is the first time I have seen it. I used to listen to this on Dr. Dementa on the radio. What? Exul the radio. Tempest. The best part of the best part is the first version was all improv. <coughs> Jax. Many other comedians did the routine first. Abbott had another partner, but when they ended up together, they clearly were the right partners. The rest is history. Wayne Finney's. It was first seen in their movie, The Naughty 90s. Mr. Bill 0327 and Michael Scott, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein is great. Original HC, uh, HGC and Michael Scott, more movie recommendations. Abbott and Costello meet the killer. Boris Karloff and Abbott and Costello meet the invisible man. Michael mm -hmm. Scott at Original HGC. Or get the DVD set, Abbott and Costello Meet the Monsters, which include Meet Frankenstein, Meet the Invisible Man, Meet Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde, and Meet the Mummy. Foke Wolf, two men that could bring you to tears with laughter and without being vulgar towards uh, anyone. Those call, those that call themselves comedians today could learn a lot from those that knew how to make you laugh by just being funny. That's so true. That is true. You don't have to be mean and say cuss words just to be funny. Dale Boxo. The first time I heard this, I just couldn't stop laughing. RLJ251. I've heard this 
routine a hundred times. I still can't stop laughing when I hear it. LOL. Robert Asia Robinson saying, laugh out loud. <laughs> Robert Alexander saying, Dwan Grobert. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know what's on third. Tomorrow's pitching, today's catching. Why is in the left field? RSRT naturally. Hmm. Seems like something actually people knows about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Proximo Costello, the left fielder's name. Abbott, why? CJ, what? Me, no, he's on second. <laughs> wow, he made a little thing with skit. you in it. <laughs> for us well hey notice uh dr proxima Pro proxima if you have, ever want to actually uh do a video just pretty much give that comment below because uh we don't mind doing a video with anyone chris rj you should see the animex parody with slappy squirrel when they were at Woodstock. We totally watched yep. that video. You guys should like check it out. Yep, it's on there. Just pretty much type it in and y'all definitely want to see it. Mike Rogers, Slappy, what's the name of the band on say Skippy Who? Comic hilarity ensues. Aaron Miller, Slappy, who's on stage? Skippy, yes. Nathan Lawson, try Abbott and Costello, two tens and a five, or 13 times seven equals 28. We also watched those videos. That video was really funny, too. It was actually creative. It was something that you really never have a mindset of doing until you watched it. Right. It was like a fun way to rip somebody out of money. Yes. Really nice. Lindelli Law, I'm 60. Try this with younger clerks. The Barbin one, that is another genius bit. Alex Henry, that was classic, too. Original lick, lick tree? Lick tree. A, the new man. The new man. Kishka Seven Wine Country. CJ and Rena. I just subscribed. You are nice people. I'm a 65 year old white guy in North Carolina. Congratulations. You've been who's on first it. The whole point of this routine is they both <laughs> keep straight faces. My son and his girlfriend tried this routine using a script and they almost made it all the way through without cracking up. Thanks for a nice video. 41219. Oh, you even dated it. Thank you. By the way. 412 is close to my birthday. Actually, it's 422. Close to my birthday. Yep. So 4595 is my birthday. And you was close. Mary Audrina. I've been waiting for someone to react to who's on first for the longest time. I'm 56 years old and this still cracks me up today. Thank you. Jeffrey Freyer. Who's on second? Who's on first? What base do you want to talk about? <laughs> no thanks. No pen on. No pen on name. <laughs> oh man. I saw this in drama class in high school. The whole class is dying watching it. Roman Johnson. Hey, I love the old classic. It is so cool. You like them. Chris Madden, y'all reaction to this epic comedy bit is golden. Poor Arena is dying. Charlie Patterson, Chris Madden. I have never seen a reaction video to Who's On First. That was awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Eliza Doolittle. I grew up on Abbott and Costello. That is their best comedy routine. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein is their best movie. Asia Robertson. The Frankenstein one is hilarious. Costello was really shocked. Dean, it is, it's as funny as today as it was half a century ago. Classic. Dean, you should, everybody know about, uh, about it. Everybody know that it was really good. I mean, Abbott and Costello is a video that y'all guys should all go check out. I mean, y'all would really love Abbott and Costello. Just check it out. We're going to put it in the description below. It's actually our first video. It's the most popular video on our channel. And it's actually most of something that y'all want to watch as a new generation or even an old generation if y'all haven't saw it y'all need to check it out for sure for sure i'm pretty sure y'all gonna want to look at it because having a car sell on who's on first it's like the best thing of everybody knows you know yeah it's a really did. funny sketch because the whole thing is like they they had it on point right on point. like no mess ups no nothing and they did it really fast at the same time and then the audience chipped in so it was like they it was like it. yeah it was even more because they they gave them the pitch because what they gave them a baseball bat it and was like helmet. so cool so like at the same time they <clears throat> they knew what they were saying they was on point they didn't laugh 
it was like the perfect the perfect video perfect video yeah definitely so if y'all have any more comments on any other videos or anything that we have made say it. sorry we miss y'all comments it's just that we was doing the best comments at the top uh, if y'all keep giving y'all comments i'm pretty sure y'all will have that best comment so we can see and actually come together and actually show y'all comment uh sometimes we're gonna actually try to get comments that are really really nice um it's just at this video is kind of hard because of all the comments. Sorry if we missed it. It just has so many comments on there that it's kind of hard to actually justify which one is what. Because we kind of read most comments that came from other people reaction of their response. So <laughs> it, it was kind of... Uh, a big thing so y'all need to make sure y'all check it out in the description below comment below and also donate below so we keep going going and going make sure you guys subscribe to cj arena like always guys peace bye i like the way she touch me touch me touch me touch me i like the way she fuck me fuck me fuck me fuck me hit it hit it hit it drop hit it hit it hit it drop